Iconic Comics has been making waves on the independent comic book scene, specifically in crowdfunding, since they arrived a couple of years ago. Basically, the first big uh, success was Common America with Tim Lim. Obviously, here with me to talk about that is Tim Lim himself. It's snowing and freezing outside. Everything is shut down here in the South. So luckily, I get to spend a day with you, Wes. Well, and you also got a, a pretty successful Kickstarter campaign going on right now. Already over $100,000. I think you hit that within a couple of hours of the, of the campaign started. Yeah, I think within 48 to 56 hours, we hit 100,000, which is very comparable to how we did last time. So as far as our metrics are concerned, we're on pace to do as well, if not better than the last campaign that we did. And then we just crossed 110 threshold yesterday evening. So we're very happy about that, too. Now, this is something out there. I remember, I think it was Comics Matter with your boy, Zach, had, had done some Q&As, I think, in his, his, uh, his YouTube channel about, is lateness okay? Me personally, I don't, I don't understand uh, why why lateness is, is okay. I, maybe for people just starting out, they haven't done a lot of campaigns, but if you've done two or three crowdfunding campaigns and you don't know to, to put your, you know, your date way in the future because you haven't been able to fulfill the past, I think that's on you. But Iconic seems to have kind of figured that problem out. You're late essentially on nothing. I think the one time you were late before Iconic, it might have been by like three, three weeks. <laughs> it was by a month. And um, it was no, not, it was four. Uh, yeah, and it was not because the book was late. It was because we were waiting on patches to arrive. So we were a month late on that. And that was the, the book that I worked on with Chuck Dixon. This was long before Iconic. Ironically, or coincidentally, I don't know which word you want to use. That's actually kind of how Iconic got started. Because after that lateness, we had to have a way for the rapid fulfillment of patches. And it was my friend who's an entrepreneur out of Texas. And he said, we can do that. Um, not a problem. It's just a two man team, myself and uh, my wife. And so I let them do it and they literally fulfilled everything in a day. So within 24 hours, it had shipped every single patch out. And that's when I said, well, I think that if you want to fulfill your dream of having an imprint company, I think that you'll be able to not only have your cake, but eat it too, because there's a problem that we need to solve, which is the problem of fulfillment and lateness. So we haven't had the problem with lateness because of the reasons that you enumerated. One, I don't, the reason I don't buy it, especially for creators who have done this for a while, at least for two years, if not your second or third book, is because we're the ones who set the number. I order our books for Common America 5 in December. And if they're telling me that they're coming in March, I don't tell the customer that they're coming in March. I tell them that they're coming in May. Why do I do that? Well, for numerous reasons. One, uh, right now we're having a snowstorm. So for all I know, there could be delays due to that. We know that there's some crises, some minor uh, problems happening across the country, if not the world, in terms of supply chain. So many reasons why you can have a delay. So you have to predict to yourself, what is that buffer going to be? And you should be fairly good and competent in doing it. Not unless you are just naturally bad at deadlines and have always been, and you can't predict these things. So I don't, I don't see that as a valid excuse or a reason. There are ways that you can address this if you're thinking from a business point of view. So we, we've been able to mitigate a lot of that just from the last two and a half, three years of doing it. Um, and we're, fa we're fairly confident in a lot of our projections as far as this is concerned. The problem with being late, you know, obviously, it's something that upsets you. It seems to have rolled over to Iconic. Is that like an Iconic mission statement? We will never you know, fulfill late. When we say we're going to deliver something, it's going to be on time, obviously, with the crowdfunding stuff. Or is that a Tim Lim edict? It's kind of both. There, There is one book that they fulfilled that's technically a late book, and that's Long Harbor by Alejandro Mirabal. But Iconic Comics did not get access to that until Alejandro approached them. So it's not that they said two or three years ago, yeah, we're going to do this book and we're going to fulfill it. And then it turns out they were late. No, they were already approached after the book had been finished, which obviously was late. But one of their things that they want to do is they want to work with people who are committed to being on time, if not early. And they will not sign off on any paperwork for a campaign whose book is not already finished. They only want to deal with people who um, have their books ready. If you're a creator and you approach them and you say, hey, I want to do this 48 page book. Iconic is going to ask, okay, how many pages are done? And if you say 20, they'll say, well, contact us once it's done, because right now we're not signing off on anything or our imprint is going to be associated with it where it's um, it's late or it's projected because we don't want that um, that blemish on us. So it's, it's kind of a model that they implemented based on what I've been telling them and Doug Ernst has been telling them. Um, we tell them kind of how the landscape is in independent comics. And they said, well, it seems like if there's a problem with lateness, then we want to distinguish ourselves from the business point of view by being earlier or on time. That's one of those things going back to Richard. 
um, I respectfully disagree with his approach because he said he put that poll out and he said, well, are you okay with late books? You know, late books is the norm. But from my perspective, it's the norm because you choose for it to be the norm. We are hopefully trying to set not necessarily a trend, but a standard for ourselves where we feel that as amateur hobbyists, that this should not be excusable for longtime professional creators. You should hold yourselves up to a better standard. There's a lot of consumer confidence associated with Iconic and the creators. Of you. you mentioned Doug, yourself, Mark Pellegrini, Alejandro. We've also got Eric Canetti, who did his first Kickstarter or Kickstarter campaign. I think it was Indiegogo, actually. And everything went very smoothly. This is going to have to move like the rest of your competitors forward. They're going to have to start meeting your standard, right? I agree completely. Um, in the last three months, there's been a lot of chatter about um, fulfilling on time, and people have been mentioning Iconic Comics specifically. Now, we're not the only ones. Obviously, there are people who have been doing this for many years. Who have Brian Polito has Brian got a, his own system. He's got his own warehouse and everything. Yes. Yep. And not just that, but you also have people like Doug Tenaple, who mm -hmm. is also on time, if not early. And um, we get a lot of our tricks from his playbook, to be honest. Um, everything from our presentation to our quality, we try to mimic him. So it's not impossible and we're not necessarily breaking the mold but i think the reason why there's a lot of focus on it is because of our consistency our rate and the fact that uh other than like brian polito with coffin comics we our imprint is a lot bigger so there has there has to be a lot of moving parts working in unison for it to work your listeners might not know but the mo most of the people who work through the iconics imprint we're all hobbyists like this isn't necessarily our full-time job or vocation you got guys like Matt Weldon, who up until last year was uh, working pretty much blue collar work. He was actually like disposing of chemical waste as his as his day job. And then his writer, Bill Williams, he's worked retail pretty much his whole life. And so I think what we're doing is we're showing like, you know, you have people that you might follow because of what they did in industry prior. And I don't know what they tell you, but there is a norm. There is a norm that they're trying to set versus what we're trying to set. And we're, we're showing that you can do it. And. Um, if we can do it, then there's no reason why a lot of the big time professionals can't. So hopefully that'll make for more well-informed readers and consumers. And when they're trying to discriminate or try to um, excuse certain behavior that they see, they say, well, that behavior doesn't make sense because these guys are red iconic. They don't have those excuses. And, you know, they're, who are they? No one knows them from Adam. Now, you mentioned the price. That's a lot of the last thing that I think is one of the secrets to iconic success. Now, you have a different price set on your Kickstarter campaign than when it goes to the iconic website. It'll be, you know, the price will be more expensive. How are you guys able to to keep the costs or the price, cost so low to the consumer during the, the crowdfunding campaign? $10 for a 50 page hardback is, is quite the deal. Part of it is due to intense negotiations. Everyone who has worked through Iconic, for the most part, has business experience. We come from either blue collar or retail sectors, or we've had to deal with the private sector. I think one thing that a lot of creators aren't comfortable with is the idea of price negotiation. It took us more than six or seven months of negotiating with our printer to get a very competitive price point on hardcovers. I basically said, here are the numbers in terms of how we're doing. And in a year's time, here's how many books we're looking to move. If you give us this price point that is agreeable and mutually beneficial to us in the long run, looking at our backer number and its growth, you're going to make more money than if you try to price gouge on the front end and have a momentary gain um, short term versus the long game. After talking with them, we agreed that they would give us like very, very competitive pricing on the hardcovers. The way it works is that we also have to incentivize customers to back us on the front end as opposed to waiting for it to come up on Iconic because the argument would be, well, why should I back you on crowdfunding when I can just get it through this online store? Through the online store, it's just more expensive. And you can tell looking at the ISBN numbers how much like the actual retail price probably will be. Um, and so Iconic, they make their money by selling our, our books on the basically on the second market as a, opposed to us who sell it on the first market. So um, that's how we deal with the pricing situation. I, I know that's like a question that's popped up is like, wow, how are they selling a 64 page hardcover for $10? It's like, well, there's a lot of negotiation, a lot of the back and forth, a lot of phone calls being made to try and get it down to where uh, we feel we can compete with former professionals in the industry who have gone into independent comics. I know a lot of people are going to be interested potentially in working with Iconic. You guys have set such a high standard. Are you the owner or is it Doug Ernst that owns Iconic? Doug Ernst is the secret president of Iconic Comics. So the people need to, to talk to Doug if they want to submit 
and get their comic published through Arcana? Yes, you should message Doug and email him because he's the guy that uh, controls everything. I am just kidding. He is not <laughs> the president of Iconic Comics. The president of Iconic Comics chooses to remain anonymous. He's an entrepreneur um, that we know personally. Anyone who's interested, and they do take open submissions, they need to email info at iconiccomics.com and they do take open submissions they say that they get anywhere between 5 to 15 submissions a week if not a month so they do have a steady inflow but they are very very particular about who they want as part of their imprint but it doesn't hurt to ask but that's who people need to contact and just make sure that your book is fully done if not 100% complete before contacting them because as I said before, they really want to uphold a reputation of quality books put out on time that really minimize the burden to the, um, the customer. If we do get customers who are looking at books that are late, then obviously that is not something that they want to be tarnishing their imprint. So preferably they, they want the books to be as pristine quality and as delivered as quickly as possible. Now, I know Iconic and, and uh, you and Mark Ninja Inc., you guys have a lot of plans that we actually can't talk about right now, but we do have Common America Volume 5. There's also an omnibus available in that Kickstarter, well over 100000 over 110000 already. There's also a vanilla ice cover. I don't think people can get that anymore. Did they were too late? <laughs> yeah, we sold out of the last one yesterday. So we were selling 200 of them. And that was an interesting one because the guy who runs Vanilla Ice Merchandising, he's a huge proponent, huge supporter of Iconic Comics. And so this was a deal that was a couple of months in the making. And so we were able to finally, you know, finalize it, have all the artwork approved and whatnot. That's an interesting team up, that's for sure. But the opportunity presented itself. It was a very amicable partnership. And so uh, probably one of the more interesting collaborations I've encountered over the last few years. But nonetheless, it's out there. And unfortunately, we sold out the last copy as of this recording. Are there any help back for Indiegogo or is it just done? It's done. That's it. For Indiegogo, they're going to get something special. They're actually going to get a variant cover that we haven't shown yet because it has spoilers for the actual book itself. We're holding on to about 400 or 450 of those for the Indiegogo release. So we'll be showing that as soon as the Kickstarter campaign is finished and has and has gone into active fulfillment. Um, but unfortunately, no, some of the rare items that we have for sale are Kickstarter exclusive only. If people are interested in obviously in supporting Common America, there's a link in the video description. You can go check it out. I could vouch for you. Tim, Tim's got some cool plans that have yet to be announced associated with this campaign. You definitely want to going to want to stay tuned. Congratulations to you and Mark once again for another successful campaign. Congratulations to Iconic Comics. Very impressed with the professionalism that goes along with having Iconic, you know, associated with your brand and getting out there because it it really does at this point. There's been enough uh, campaigns that have fulfilled all the time. Obviously, there's the one anomaly that's out there that that uh, that you talked about earlier. But like, there's just a, a trust factor now that's not only associated with the creators and, and the the comic, but it's also just a, kind of associated with the brand now. I think that's really really important. Thank you very much, Wes. What it really boils down to too is that we're we're only human. So at some point, there are going to be errors that are made. But what we hope is that with the the number of successful campaigns and books delivered on time that we've had, that we will have enough good faith and goodwill generated with our readership that they'll forgive us should those mistakes happen down the line. But we are doing everything we can from the business side of things, from our end, to minimize those so that anyone who trusts us will have a very smooth experience. We really take a lot of pleasure and joy in terms of not only being able to get them a good book out, but also being able to adhere to strong business principles that we feel like any person entering the crowdfunding space should be able to implement and employ. Absolutely. If you're an iconic fan, next month, you've got Arc Athena, I believe volume two is going to be uh, crowdfunded. March, I think, do we get the new Soul Finder potentially at iconiccomics.com? Yes, I think in March, we're going to have the release of Soul Finder three, which is going to be, I think, a direct to iconic comics book so for people who don't like crowdfunding that's a very good opportunity because then you can just buy it directly from there get immediately the next and get it within days <laughs> and then yeah and um, then the the soul finder common america crossover i think is the next book you guys got a lot of stuff going on yeah at least from now until may we have something going on every month that fulfillment should begin in late march early april for common america 5 and then we're going to launch a campaign for it on indiegogo which should only be about two weeks and then immediately after that sometime in early to mid-may is when we're going to launch the three-way crossover between Common America, Black Ops, 
and Soul Finder. And that one is going to be a lot of fun. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much, Tim. And once again, congratulations. Thank you very much, Wes. I appreciate you having me on.